Well, I'm a little behind schedule. I normally like to be doing this at the beginning of October, but it's still been pretty warm out here. Temperatures in the, you know, 85 during the day here in South Georgia. But now I've got a bunch of transplants ready and it's time to get them in the ground. Look at all these pretty little plant babies right here. All this stuff needs to get planted. Got a little more down here. We got some kale and some collards. Go back up here, we got a bunch of different cabbage, some broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, lettuce, and even a tray of onions that need to get planted. So in the last video, we kicked off our cool season vegetable crop planting by getting two double rows of carrots in this plot right here. And we're gonna add to it today. Those carrots, we've been keeping the soil nice and moist and some of them are starting to there's a little volunteer sunflower there, but you can see those carrots are starting to pop up. Using the drip tape there to keep that bed nice and moist for good germination. And they should all be popping up here in the next few days. I've got this plot right here. Plenty more room to plant other stuff. While we got our main line installed because we set up drip on those carrots. So we'll just be adding more drip lines today putting more stuff in this plot probably won't fill it up completely but we're certainly going to add to it now we've got three plots here in the dream garden where we're going to be planting some cool season vegetables one we're going to be planting all alliums onions garlic chives things like that we got our no-till plot that we're going to be planting on the next video and we're going to try to put things in there that have relatively similar maturity dates broccoli cauliflower cabbage things like that in this plot where the carrots are i'm going to plant things that are going to take a little longer or that are going to be here longer these carrots will overwinter them and so they're going to be here till early spring when we get ready to dig them so the crops i'm going to put in here are things that are going to take a while or that are going to be repeat harvest stuff and going to be here a while so those would include kale We've got two varieties of kale we're going to be putting in here we'll harvest kale you know on through may sometimes you know if they don't bolt we'll just keep picking them keep picking them we're going to put collards here we're also going to put brussels sprouts here brussels sprouts take a long long time and so that will you know work well in this plot with the carrots we don't have to worry about a lot of turnover in this plot because all the things we're going to put here at least today are going to be here a while so for almost all of my cool season crops, I go with a standard three foot space and that seems to work pretty good and I uh, don't need to put them too far apart. I want to get as most out of our garden plots as we can. So that's what I did with these double rows of carrots. They're on a three foot space. And so I'm coming off this second row of carrots here and I'm actually going to go four feet. Since that's a double row, that carrot foliage will kind of stretch out a little bit. So we're gonna go four feet from that, put a row, and then the rest of these rows here, we're gonna put three feet apart. So the first row here I've got marked off, we'll probably put collards there, put another variety of kale here, another variety of kale here, a row of Brussels sprouts, one variety here, and another row of Brussels sprouts, another variety here. So we're gonna be putting five rows in this plot. Today, still have room for a few more rows we'll figure out what to throw in there a little later so i'm going to go grab my wheel hose make a furrow get that drip tape buried get it hooked up turned on so we can see where our emitters are and then we'll talk about the varieties we're going to plant today song for you, you're beautiful, even when you're down, you know this, you never talk yourself out of it, Lila, it's all inside your head, Eleanor Roosevelt said, all right, all right, all right, got those five drip lines buried, hooked up there to our main line, got the water on, 
you'll notice this one right here looks a little more healed than the other four this was my drip tape layer jammed on me about halfway down the row and uh had to come in with my high arch and kind of recover it not a big deal we can see our lines there one two three four five got our water on and we can start to see those water spots popping up right there where our emitters are every foot along the row and that's where we'll be putting our plants okay now let's talk about these pretty babies right here we got two trays here these are our 162 cell trays i always say good garden starts with good transplants and we grow good transplants by putting them in good trays using a good seed starting mix and keeping these puppies fertilized as soon as they put on true leaves keeping them nice and healthy we grew these out in our greenhouse and they look ready to go in the ground how do we tell when they're ready to go in the ground well it's pretty simple when you can grab that stem right there and you're not squeezing it you're just barely tugging on it and you can pull that puppy out of the tray just like that now we can see here we got a nice transplant it's nice you know root structure here the soil's not falling apart we got a nice little root ball there and inside these cells here there's these things called vertical root training ribs and we can see that there that trains those roots to grow downward instead of wrapping around so this thing becomes root bound so these roots are trained to grow downward and that means once we put them in the ground these things will take off pretty quickly we got three varieties here first one we have is this blue night kale this is more of a frilly kale variety you've seen this used as garnish if you've ever been to old shoney's but uh this is really good kale to eat and if you like eating kale raw and salads this is a great variety for that you can also saute it put it in soups or whatever this blue night is super super productive i grew it last year it just puts on a ton of big leaves and uh, it kind of stays shorter than some of the other kale varieties but a nice compact plant there lots of production from those guys here we have probably the most popular variety of kale and this is our lacinato kale also called dinosaur kale and this stuff right here is super productive too we can pick these leaves off and this stuff is pretty heat tolerant in addition to being cold tolerant and we can uh, keep picking this stuff on up to when it gets hot in may and then over here we got our collards always got to have some collard greens and we used to have a variety called tiger that was really good that variety has since been replaced with this one here called top bunch 2.0 i grew this last year it's a really really good variety lots of production i always say collards as far as biomass go are probably the most productive crop you can grow in the garden you just keep picking those bottom leaves they're really really heat tolerant but also probably the most cold tolerant green you can grow and then over here on this tray we've got brussels sprouts now brussels sprouts are a little tricky to grow in the south because they need a good shot of cold to trigger that sprout production so the goal is to get them in the ground now while it's still a little warm get some nice vegetation on them and then hopefully we get a decent frost or two here and there that will help trigger some of that sprout production got two varieties here you can see we've got a nice little brussels sprouts transplant right there first variety is called jade cross this is a hybrid i grew last year did really really well for me so i'm growing it again and then right here we have a variety we just added this year one i haven't grown before and this one is called cat skill so we're going to plant a row of cat skill and a row of jade cross and kind of compare them to see the differences between the two hopefully the weather cooperates and we get a nice little harvest on these come you know late winter early spring these guys are going to take a while just like those carrots and all three of these here will be just continually harvesting these guys on up to when it gets hot in late spring early summer so i can kind of start to see where my emitters are along the row here and i can also kind of feel around for them and uh feel where that soil is wet where we need to put that transplant there's one right there what I like to do, just because it's easier than dragging the tray down the row, is just come down here and kind of throw all my plants on the soil, approximately one foot apart, and I'll get them straightened out and get the right spacing as I'm working down the row, finding these emitters. Now, the longer you let this water run, 
the easier they are to find. So our tape is right there. Got our transplant right here. And we're just going to put it right beside that emitter. These kale transplants, you don't have to plant them super deep. Just a little bit over where that root ball is. So we got that guy in there. Come over here another foot. We'll find us another emitter right here. Right there. We'll put this guy in the ground right here or work our way on down the row and get this row of blue night planted. All right, we got a row of blue night kale in. Next row, going in with some lacinato kale. Just a little tip here. If you're gonna throw them on the ground like I do and they come back and stick them in, you wanna do this pretty soon after you put them on the ground, especially if it's warm outside. If that soil is hot, you can burn these plants and sometimes they won't recover. You also need to make sure if you're not planting these on drip, that you can come in behind here with some overhead water pretty quick. Need to get some water on these guys, especially if you're dealing with some 84 degree days like we still are out here. So got to get water on them pretty quick or else you can lose a few transplants. And I speak from experience on that matter because last year I lost about a quarter of my transplants had to replant. Of course, we were planting late September, early October and had a real late summer last year. It was just too hot and you just couldn't get enough water on them. I was having to overhead water them just to keep them going. That's why this year I waited to the middle of October here to get cool season transplants in the ground. There were even some commercial farmers around here last year that were planting cabbage and they had it on, you know, an irrigated field with a pivot but they were out there planting it with a transplanter and the pivot didn't move fast enough to get water on them puppies as they was putting them in the ground and they lost, several farmers I heard lost a considerable amount of cabbage transplants doing it that way. So make sure you can get some water on these puppies quick, especially if it's still warm where you are. Lila, you're perfect like you are, a sublime creation, but you play yourself small. Such a waste, such a waste of your beauty, girl. I love the key to it is you, turn it when you feel it's true. All right, all right, all right, they're all in. Five rows there, two rows of Brussels sprouts, a row of collards, two rows of kale. Now, that row spacing may look a little wide to you right now, but. Once these babies get up and grow and put on some foliage, they'll spread out a good little bit. And the goal is here is to leave about enough room in there for me to scoot a basket down between them when I go to harvest them. And that should be what happens from my experiences here. We'll have a little bit of a pathway, a little bit of walkway down the middle of each row for harvesting. And uh, as far as weeding, should be about two passes with the wheel hoe there between each row once these things get up growing we'll take care of all of our weeds maybe a little work with a single time cultivator until they get up and going right close to the plants there now as far as taking care of these guys and fertilizing them i'm going to do things just a hair different than i normally do in the past i have waited till i can tell they've overcome any transplant shock they start growing and then i'll start pumping the 20 20 20 and micro boost to them through that drip system using our fertilizer injector however i've been doing some research lately and a lot of people are saying give it to them right away don't wait on you know any transplant shock to go away go ahead and give them a little bit a little bit little spoon fed bit of fertilizer right after you transplant them and that will reduce the transplant shock time and get them up and going even faster so i'm not going to do it today but probably the next time i water these guys either tomorrow or the next day i'm gonna go ahead and shoot some juice to them get them up and going nice and fast and by my best estimations it looks like we still have room here on this side of the plot for i'd say two to three more rows maybe I haven't decided what i'm gonna put here i got some herbs almost ready in the greenhouse some cilantro some basil and some thai basil i might stick that right there since i have those transplants ready hopefully those will grow good throughout the winter here and uh that might be what we put there 
I wish I had some rutabaga transplants ready, but I, we ran out of room in the greenhouse. So I'm gonna have to get some of those going and we'll find somewhere to put those, but looks like probably herbs right here. So that plot there where we're doing our more traditional style that we always do with the drip tape, the fertigation, all that good stuff is well underway. On our next video, we're gonna be focusing on this plot behind me where we're doing our no-till experiment. We're doing things completely different right here. And so make sure you join us on that video to see how that goes. I'll put some links in the description below to all the varieties we planted today in addition to our seed starting trays, any of the tools you saw in this video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give me a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and ring that bell so you get notified every time we come out with a new video. And if you did enjoy this one, check out these other two fall planting videos right here. I think you really enjoy those as well. We'll see you next time.